welcome back to Programming for Beginners. This is Bittersweet. Today we're going to be learning about classes and objects, which are the essential components of programming, and specifically in object-oriented programming. We're going to do so by building our own blockchain and for our very own cryptocurrency called Bittercoin. And this may all sound a little bit intimidating right now, but I guarantee you at the end of today's lesson, you will have a good understanding of how to write your own classes and how does a blockchain work in the world of cryptocurrencies. So let's begin. So what exactly is a blockchain? A blockchain is a system designed to store data in a decentralized network. And decentralized basically means that rather than storing the data in one place and have it managed by one person, one company, or one authority, the data is stored across many, many different computers and managed by the community. And the most common type of data that you'll see is probably transaction data for cryptocurrencies. So every time new transactions are made, these transactions are added to a new block and then appended to the blockchain. The people who are doing that are what we call the miners, like Bitcoin miners. And the Bitcoin miners would validate these transactions, then put these transactions into a new block in the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. And in return, they would receive cryptocurrencies as a reward for their efforts. And the whole process is what we call uh, Bitcoin mining or cryptocurrency mining. Conceptually, a blockchain is basically a bunch of blocks in the chain and each block would contain information such as the uh, the transactions and some kind of unique identifier for this block what we call a hash or a hash value which is basically like a unique value and it may contain other information such as uh, a reference to the previous block like the uh, previous blocks hash This could be used for validation or simply as a reference to the previous block. The very first block in the blockchain is what we call a genesis block. A genesis block would not have any information about its previous block because it is the first block in the blockchain. So to create this kind of blockchain in code, we would probably need some kind of block object. And in object-oriented programming, which is probably the most common type of programming, everything would be an object. So we will probably also have uh, some kind of blockchain object. And to create an object, we also need some kind of blueprint or instructions to tell us uh, what kind of properties should this object have. And the blueprint for creating an object is what we call a class. So basically, class gives us the instructions or blueprint about how to create this object. And an actual object would be a um, like an instance of this class. And one class can be used to create many, many, many instances of objects. So next, let's create our blockchain together. Today, we're going to be using Python as our programming language as usual. But the concept of a class should be fairly similar across different programming languages. So first, create a new file and save it anywhere that you like. I'm going to name this file blockchain.py. And first, we need to create a class to represent a block. And we can do so by using the class keyword followed by the name of the class, which is block, and a colon. And it's always good practice to add some kind of documentation string above your class declaration just to explain what this class does so that when other uh, engineers look at your code, they don't have to read through the whole thing. They can easily understand what this class does. And here we use the triple quotation mark to indicate a multi-line string. And we can say this represents a block inside a blockchain. And usually for a class, there are three main components. We have some kind of properties, basically just variables representing uh, the properties of this class. 
we have a initialization method telling us how do we want to initialize an object of this class. And then we may have some other um, methods. And the initialization method and the other method, methods are in the format of a function that we looked at last time. So let's look at the initialization first. To initialize, we use a def keyword, same for functions followed by init underscore underscore. So this is the format for a init method in Python. And for Python specifically, the first input parameter for a method inside of a class is always self to represent the object itself. And we may pass additional um, input parameters such as the previous blocks hash, and the transaction for uh, storing inside this block. So realistically speaking, the transaction could be um, like a list of transactions and each transaction would contain information such as uh, who was it from, who was it to, the timestamp, the amount. But in our case, for simplicity purpose, we'll just use one transaction for each block and the format of a transaction would be uh, just a simple string. So usually inside the init method, we want to save the value passed in from these input parameters to um, the properties of this class. And the properties will just be variables that we create. But um, for Python, there's a very easy way to do it. Um, you can simply say self dot the name of the property and the name of the new property that you create could be the same as the uh, the input parameters name. And actually, that's what we usually do. So we will do self dot previous block hash. So note that this is actually a new variable that we create. And it's going to equal to the value of this input parameter, which its name is also previous block hash. Similarly, we want to create another property called transaction and set it to be the value from the uh, transaction variable that we passed in. And lastly, we also want to create a new property called hash, but hash is not really passed in as an input parameter because we can just calculate. And let's actually create a new function under methods to create a hash. And remember that the first parameter is always self, it's actually very easy to forget, but if you forget, the ID will give you an error. So in here, there's actually a very convenient library that we can import to uh, create a hash for us. It's called hashlib. And to use it, we just do hashlib dot sha256, which is a type of um, way to create a hash value pass in some kind of input, we can use the um, transaction as a unique input into um, this function. And the transaction is actually in the format of a string, so we need to um, use the encoded version of the string. Usually the hash value would be in the format of a hex string, so let's finally call the hex digest method to convert this to a hex string. So this line of code may look kind of scary or complicated, but basically what it's doing is it's using the transaction as a unique input and then calling the hashlib function to uh, create a unique hash value based on the transaction. And finally, we can call this method self.createHash to create a new hash value and assign it to the hash property of this class. Now that we're done creating the definition for block, we also need to define another class called blockchain. In this blockchain class, we also need a init function, pass in self, and in this case, we don't really need any input variable, so we can just say self. So blockchain needs to do two things. First, it creates this genesis block as the first block, and the second thing is that it keeps track of a list of blocks and uh, should be able to append new blocks to this list. So first, let's create a new property called chain, which is basically just 
a list. And next, let's define a function called create genesis block to create that first block. And in here, um, let's create a new variable called genesis block. This will be a uh, object instantialized from the block class definition. So to create a new object, pass in the uh, input parameters required, which is the previous blocks hash and the transaction. But since this is the first block, we don't really have a previous block hash. In this case, we can just do any like arbitrary string such as like zero. And this first block would not contain any transactions. So let's just create a dummy uh, string saying no transaction. And finally, let's append this block to the chain. So self that chain append which is a method used to append a new element into a list, append this genesis block. And when we initialize this blockchain, we want to call this create genesis block method. So self dot create genesis block. Since this is a method to call a method, we use the uh, parentheses. All right, so next let's define a new function to create a new block and append it to the list. So def add block and we need to pass in the transaction to store in this block. Similar to creating the genesis block, we can do a new variable new block is equal to block and here we need to pass in the uh, the hash value of the previous block. To do so, let's first retrieve that previous block from self.chain. And we can do so by saying um, previous block is equal to self dot chain. Use this bracket notation to retrieve an element from this list. And we can do minus one to indicate the last element of this list. And the previous blocks hash will equal to previous block dot hash. So this dot notation here without parentheses indicates that we are retrieving the value of this hash property. And finally, we can use that to pass in as the input parameter for block. So block, previous block hash, and uh, the transaction that we pass in here. We can directly use that to create the new block. And lastly, we need to append this new block to the blockchain. And finally, let's add a new function called description. This function is basically like a convenience function for us to um, basically print and describe whatever is inside this blockchain. So we can use it for debugging purpose or to better visualize what is inside this blockchain. And in here, we want to loop through every block in the blockchain and print its hash and its transaction to just validate that things are stored correctly. So we can use a for loop for doing so. For i in range, and the range that we want to use here is the length or uh, the number of elements inside this chain. To do so, we can use the len method, standing for length, of self.chain. Here for each i, we can get the actual block from the blockchain. So block is equal to self.chain bracket, remember bracket is used to retrieve an element from this list, and we can simply pass an i as the index. So first let's print the, uh, the index. So block index is equal to i. And remember that i starts from 0, so the first block will have index of 0. And next let's print the uh, hash for this block. 
which is equal to block dot hash. And next, let's print the um, transaction inside this block, which is equal to block dot transaction. And finally, let's just print an empty line so that's easier for us to read. So now that we have our class definition for both a block and a blockchain, we can create an actual blockchain object. So let's create a new variable called blockchain and it's equal to blockchain parentheses and to initialize the blockchain we don't need any kind of input parameters so we can just do an empty parentheses and let's try to add some kind of transaction to this blockchain so let's say blockchain add block we need to pass in the actual transaction let's say this transaction is between two people one person named Annie, um, the other pe person named Brom. So Annie sent Brom 20 bitcoins. And let's add another transaction. So blockchain, add another block. Let's say Brom sent um, another person named Caitlin 10 bitcoins. And finally, to see if these blocks are added correctly, let's call the uh, description method for blockchain. So that inside this description method, we're printing the information about this blockchain. So let's press Command B to build. And we can see that we have three blocks created. But somehow the hash says it's none. So we know that the hash function is probably not calculated properly. So let's go back to create hash. And here for a function, I forgot to add the keyword of return. Now let's press command B to build again. And we can see that the hash is now populated correctly for the three blocks. So the first block has transaction of no transaction because it's the first block. And the second block, um, we have Annie sent Brom 20 bitter coins. And for the third block, we have Brahms and Caitlin 10 bitter coins. So congratulations on building your simple blockchain. In reality, a blockchain is a bit more complicated than this. It um, also provides ways to validate that the information inside the blockchain is correct. Thank you for tuning into today's lesson. All the code from today will be available in the GitHub link provided in the video description. And make sure you hit the subscribe button for the latest video updates. Keep coding and I will see you next time.